For most of us, Fiji is a playground to enjoy the sun and fun with the family. But the island paradise is currently a parking lot for a Russian oligarch's $450 million super yacht. It's the latest chapter in the war between Putin's mega-rich cronies and the West. These sanctions are destroying the financial lives of the oligarchs. It's the high-stakes chase on the high seas. Making good on the US president's threat. We're joining with European allies to find and seize their yachts, their luxury apartments, their private jets. We're coming for you, ill-begotten gains. Yes, it has been a long time coming. After the invasion of Ukraine. If the West had imposed tough sanctions 10 years ago, I think Putin would have made a, a very different calculation about what he was going to do in Ukraine. Bill Browder, former investment banker turned anti-corruption crusader, has spent more than a decade following the money trail of Vladimir Putin and his mega-wealthy cronies. The amount of money that we could identify that was stolen out of Russia um, over an eight-year period by corrupt Russian officials was $232 billion. So far, dozens of vessels worth billions of dollars have either been officially seized or prevented from leaving ports in Italy, Spain, Germany, France, the Netherlands and England. But there are 118 billionaires on the Forbes rich list in Russia. And so we're really only a third of the way there. Another super yacht is much closer. The Armadeo was in Mexico when sanctions were announced. It hightailed at west, heading for Vladivostok via Australia, but in holiday hotspot of Fiji, the voyage was cut short by police. The Amadea is linked to Suleiman Karimov, a gold mining oligarch with a $19 billion fortune. This 106 meter floating palace can accommodate 16 guests and 36 crew. It's worth a whopping $450 million and still it only ranks as the 62nd biggest private yacht in the world. Its fate is in the hands of the Fijian High Court, which will decide on Tuesday if authorities from the US Klepto Capture Task Force can seize it. It's actually a pretty complicated area of the law sort of before you even get to identifying ownership. You need to show that whatever asset you're going after is proceeds of a crime or facilitates a crime. So just showing ownership is not sufficient. Sarah Chrisoff is a former U.S. prosecutor specializing in international money laundering and fraud who keeps a close eye on Operation Klepto Capture. This is really uh, an unprecedented time in history where much of the rest of the world has come together against a, a particular country. And so I think is made it easier, although still difficult, um, to, to move against these assets. So who are the mega-rich Ruskies on the West hit list? This is 68-year-old Aleisha Uzmanov. He's a mining oligarch with a personal fortune of $18 billion. He owns mega yacht the Dilbar, valued at more than $800 million which is currently being held at Hamburg in Germany. Alexei Mordashov, 56, is worth $25 billion. He's chairman of Russia's biggest steel manufacturer. There's plenty of steel in his 142-metre giga yacht called Nord, which is worth somewhere north of $600 million. Perhaps the best-known oligarch is Roman Abramovich, the former owner of the famous Chelsea Premier League football club. He initially accumulated his fortune in oil and nickel before turning to investment. His current net wealth, around $19 billion. And Abramovich has two yachts in the sights of Western authorities, the Eclipse and the Solaris, both valued at more than $600 million. And then there's Vladimir Putin himself. His personal wealth is hard to gauge. 
He says he is on a salary of $140,000 a year, but he's reportedly amassed a $250 billion fortune, including super yachts like the $140 million Graceful and the $80 million Olympia, allegedly a gift from Abramovich. Russian politics expert Professor Stephen Fortescue says Putin can ride the sanctions out. He believes that he can survive the sanctions. I think his belief is that he has got time on his side. That's my reading of his thinking, that time is on his side and therefore the sanctions, they're going to be serious, but we will withstand them because ultimately they will fade away. But could sanctions turn the oligarchs against Putin? I think there's a 0% probability of the oligarchs rising up to take out Putin. The best chance for another Russian revolution rests with Ukraine. If Putin loses the war in Ukraine, if he's soundly defeated, if Russia is defeated, the Russian people won't allow President Putin to carry on and they'll take care of him themselves.